The opening scene features two best friends named Chong Chakai and Sung Yuan Yuan. They appear to be very close and enjoy each other's company. Currently, Chakai is recalling all of their happy memories and writing them down in his private diary, mentioning how he started developing feelings for Yuan Yuan. Unfortunately, to this day, he has not been able to confess it. The scene then shifts to the present day. At East Shine Music Studio, a bunch of employees are discussing the release of a new album. After listening to a few songs, the supervisor claims that they fall short of expectations. Following this, we are introduced to a woman named Yichi, who also works at East Shine Music as the music director's assistant. She has a son named Kaeli, whom she loves a lot. One night after putting him to sleep, Yichi works late to search for a great song. She listens to a variety of CDs, but finds none of them particularly enjoyable. However, after multiple rejections, she does come across a heartfelt song that immediately entices her. The next day, she plays the song in the office, impressing everyone. The supervisor asks about the singer, but the CD's envelope only mentions K and Cream. Hearing this, the music director, Wang Po Han, informs them that K was his colleague when he worked at Pocket Music Studio. His full name is Chong Chakai, and Cream's real name is Sun Yuan Yuan. Unfortunately, K died of leukemia, and Cream, unable to cope with his loss, took her own life. Afterwards, the supervisor decides to release the song, so she instructs Pohan and Nietzsche to obtain its copyright. As a result, the two go to Pocket Studio, where they are given a list of K's songs, but they are unable to find the one they require. The employee tells them about Cindy, a photographer who has some of Kay's belongings. In hopes of locating the copyright, the two meet Cindy at her photo studio, but she is unwilling to provide them with Kay's belongings. After failing to persuade her, Yi Chi sneaks into Cindy's office that night and begins looking for the copyright papers. While she is at it, she discovers Kay's personal diary detailing his past. Upon reading it, Yi Chi learns that his father was about to close his music store as nobody wants to listen to sad songs. She also discovers that Kay had a close relationship with his father, who was dying of cancer. The scene then cuts to a flashback of Kay and his father driving home from the hospital. On their way, his father hands him a music CD and recommends that he listen to it. Unfortunately, their vehicle collides with another, causing a serious accident. Despite their critical condition, the father and son survive, but the people in the other car don't. This tragic accident shatters his father's mind, causing his health to decline rapidly. One day, Kay is on his way to school when Cream boards the same bus. It is their first ever meeting. Unfortunately, he falls asleep and accidentally rests his head on her, causing her to create a scene. Later, Kay becomes nervous when he learns that Cream is actually a transfer student at his school. He tries avoiding her, but she eventually calls him out and engages in a physical brawl. After that, she bullies Kay whenever she sees him, keeping them at odds. One day after school, Kay is working as a part-timer at a convenience store when Cream shows up. While she's shopping, Kay receives a call from his hospitalized father. She overhears their conversation and learns that his old man is battling cancer. As a result, Cream feels bad for him and decides to stop bullying him. The following day, she brings him some food, leaving him in utter shock. Later that evening, Kay goes to see his father in the hospital. Unfortunately, the latter is in deplorable condition, and this makes Kay faint on the spot. Back in the present, Yichi finishes reading, puts the book in her bag, and prepares to head home, when suddenly, Cindy hits her from behind with a rod, knocking her unconscious. She then reports Yichi to the police station, where she is charged with violating the law. When Pohan finds out about this, he rushes to the police station, apologizes to Cindy, and somehow manages to get Yichi released. Upon returning home, Yichi resumes reading Kay's diary, continuing the flashback. Kay awakens in the hospital only to learn that his father only has a few days to live. Shortly after, his mother shows up to see her ex-husband. While speaking with Kay, she says that his father won't be in pain after he dies. Kay realizes that his mother wants everything to end soon, which breaks his heart. He then walks out of the hospital and finds Crane beating up a woman on the street. He rushes to stop her, and they all end up at the police station. Not long after, Cream's aunt arrives and tries to persuade the cops into letting the girl go. She goes on to mention that Cream's parents died a while back, shattering her heart. Hearing this, Kay realizes why she behaves coldly. He is now able to see the pain and loneliness in her eyes, even though she isn't crying. 
It is also revealed that the people who died in the previous accident involving Kay and his father were none other than her parents. That night, Kay and Creamer at a park when he asks her why she was beating the woman. She responds that the woman was her father's mistress and at the time of the incident, she was berating him on the call. The following day, Kay is sleeping in class when the teacher informs him of his father's death. Distraught, he rushes to the hospital and bursts into tears. After the funeral, Kay's mother hands him some money and apologizes to him for not being able to stay with him. Kay, who can't afford to lose her, pleads with her to stay, but she ultimately leaves after one last hug. At present, Yichi feels very sad after learning all of this, so she goes to bed and tightly hugs Kaylee. The following day, Pohan searches for Kay's Facebook profile and finds a photo of him with his mother. So, he immediately calls Yichi and shares his decision to meet Kay's mother. After this, they go to Kay's mother's workplace and inquire about the song's copyright. However, the woman is completely unaware of it. The entire time, Yichi glares at her in rage and finally questions why she abandoned her son at a time when he needed her the most. The mother responds that she was exhausted from caring for her ex-husband and his medical bills overwhelmed her. She didn't want to be in the same situation again, so she left. Yichi becomes enraged and storms away, claiming that she does not deserve to be a mother. On the way home, Yichi is reminded of the time when she was pregnant and how her boyfriend told her to abort the baby. While in the hospital, she tried to contact her boyfriend several times, but he didn't respond. As a result, she finally texted him to say that it's over, and she decided to raise the baby as a single mother. But things aren't easy for Yichi because Kaili was born with a complicated congenital heart defect and has had four surgeries up to this point. Currently, Yichi is in the hospital where the doctor informs her that Kaili's pulmonary artery is getting narrow, reducing oxygen levels. He also mentions that the child must undergo another surgery with only a 40% chance of success. Pohan, who is aware of this, sympathizes with both mother and son. Afterwards, he too begins reading Kay's diary on Yi Chi's recommendation. Once more, the scene shifts back to the past, where Kay considers selling his house as it's too big for him to live alone. When Cream finds out about this, she decides to move in with him, preventing him from selling the house. Coincidentally, it's her birthday, so she brings a cake. Before cutting it, she makes a couple of wishes and asks him to make a third one. The two then share the cake and begin having fun until they lay down and start talking. During this, she expresses that her English name is Cream and that she will now refer to him as Kay. When he asks her the reason, she says it sounds more like a family and they're now a family. Kay is overcome with emotion because his third wish was to have his family back. From that day on, they spend the majority of their time together. They attend school, collaborate in their studies, enjoy watching movies together, and comfort each other when they cry. They share the happiest moments, making them forget about their tragic past. Kay develops feelings for her, but he is unsure how she feels. One day, he takes her on a long tour, which she has always desired to do. They first board a train and then rent a scooter to explore the beautiful city. While riding around, Kay's happiness reaches its peak when Cream slowly hugs him from behind, convincing him that she likes him as well. However, their joy is short-lived as Kay starts feeling dizzy and collapses from the scooter. The two end up in the hospital, but thankfully they only have minor injuries. Before leaving the hospital, the nurse advises Kay to see his doctor soon after returning home as his blood has some abnormalities. As soon as he walks out of the room, Cream hugs him tightly and sobs because she was really scared of losing him. As per the nurse's instruction, Kay goes for the checkup only to discover that he has cancer. He returns home depressed, but doesn't reveal anything to Cream. Kay pretends to be fine, but when he enters his room, he sobs, thinking that he won't be able to love Cream. However, as time passes, they resume their normal lives. Following graduation, the two of them work as lyricists in a pop music studio. Cream's first song impresses her chubby boss, Bonnie, so she assigns her additional tasks. In the midst of it all, Kay and Cream become increasingly close. One day, he visits a dental clinic to have his teeth checked. Shortly after finishing, he gets up to leave, but the dizziness strikes again, causing him to collapse. The dentist, Yusian, rushes him to the hospital and waits for him to regain consciousness. After he wakes up, Yusian asks if he wants him to call his family, but Kay doesn't want anyone to worry. 
In the present, while reading Kay's story, Pohan discovers a photograph of Cream in a wedding dress with another guy. Curious, he conducts a bit of research and finds out that the guy's name is Yang Yuxian, who also happens to be Cindy's ex-boyfriend. Following this, he summons Chi Chi and the two visit Yuxian at his clinic. They play Kay's song, and the dentist immediately recognizes it. He then reveals that a devastated Cream sang it at Kay's funeral. However, Yuxian doesn't have any idea about the song's copyright. While returning, Yi Chi receives a call from an anonymous man who harasses her. She wonders why she keeps getting such frequent calls, and Pohan asks if her son knows how to use the phone. This makes her realize that Kay Lee is behind all this, so she confronts him as soon as she gets home. After asking several times, Kay Lee reveals he wants to find a boyfriend for her because he is scared that she will have no family after he dies. Hearing this, Yi Chi is taken aback for a moment, but she quickly hugs the little boy and consoles him that everything will be fine. In the next scene, we see Cindy and Yu Xian's love story. They first meet at a photoshoot event and then run into each other by chance at a park. During their conversation, an elderly gentleman accidentally bumps into Cindy and spills his coffee on her clothes. In order to help her, Yu Xian invites her to his place and offers her his clothes. Later, Cindy appreciates his efforts and invites him to dinner, which makes him very happy. From that day on, they start seeing each other more frequently, and at one photo gallery event, Cindy holds his hand, finally beginning their relationship. As the days pass, Yusin becomes more involved in her photography projects and learns that she requires a specific lens to enhance her photographs. Since she can't afford it, he buys it for her, making her super excited. One day, Yusian's father, who is also a dentist, asks him to end their relationship and find a girl who can help them with their clinic. However, he ignores his father because he truly loves Cindy. One day at her gallery event, Yusian gathers all of his courage and proposes marriage. Cindy is perplexed for a moment, but after she gathers herself, she accepts. Several days later, she pays a visit to UCN's clinic to share the good news that she has been nominated for an International Photography Award. This thrills UCN, and he congratulates her profusely. However, this is not the case with his father, as the old man doesn't appreciate her accomplishments, making her feel bad. He also forces UCN to go out to lunch with deserving girls whom he can marry. After much coercion, UCN goes to a restaurant to meet a girl, but unfortunately, Cindy spots them, leaving her devastated. At the award ceremony, Cindy is approached by one of the judges who offers her a deal in which she can win the International Photography Award if she sleeps with him. Cindy, who is heartbroken, can't think of anything else, so she heads to the restroom and makes out with the judge. Later that night, UCN and Cindy meet at his place, but neither of them reveals the truth to the other. Back in the present, Pohan is driving home when he spots Yi Chi delivering food on her scooter. This makes him realize that she requires more funds for her son's surgery. He then approaches her and asks why she didn't seek his assistance, to which Yi Chi responds that she wouldn't be able to repay him and she dislikes being in debt. Pohan, who cares about her, buys her food and waits for her outside her place. A short while later, she arrives after finishing her shift, and the two, along with Kaele, dine together. During this time, Pohan saves his phone number in Kaeli's phone, instructing him to call him if his mother doesn't answer his call. In the flashback, Kay is at the hospital for a checkup, but there are no signs of improvement. The doctor, who is aware of his personal life, inquires as to why he's concealing it from Cream. Kay responds that it will only cause a commotion. However, he is worried thinking about her after he's gone. While talking, Kay gets an idea and heads to UCN. He then invites the dentist to an upcoming party so that he can introduce him to Cream. As planned, Kay takes Cream to the party where he introduces her to UCN and leaves them alone. He then sneaks out of the party and cries all the way home. The following day, he asks Cream about her feelings towards UCN, to which she responds that he is a good person. She goes out with UCN for yet another drink, and this time, Kay is envious. However, he keeps his emotions hidden just for the sake of her happiness. At work, Kay's co-worker Pong informs him about UCN's fiancé and shows him pictures of her with other guys at work. Seeing this, Kay decides to expose the woman and end their relationship so that UCN and Cream can be together. He then sends the photos to UCN, who immediately confronts Cindy at home. The latter doesn't deny it, leaving him disheartened. Their argument heats up even more when she mentions seeing him with another girl. However, 
UCN clarifies that he was on a blind date set up by his father and that he completely rejected the girl. Afterwards, Cindy examines the CCTV footage and discovers that it was Kay who sent those photos. As a result, she storms into his office and beats him with a bat until Pong intervenes. He promptly apologizes to her, explaining why he wanted their relationship terminated. He also mentions that Cream has no one to look after her and that he doesn't want her to be alone after he dies. After learning all this, Cindy agrees to break up with UCN, but only on the condition that Kay be the subject of one of her articles. When the latter accepts, she interviews him, asking him several questions about his feelings for Cream. Later that night, Kay returns home and Cream innocently expresses her desire to go to the beach. To make her happy, he grants her wish and takes her to a beautiful beach. While admiring the scenery, Cream asks him to be with her in the next life because she adores UCN in this one. Hearing this, Kay is happy but devastated at the same time. On the other hand, Cindy meets UCN one last time at a restaurant where he breaks up with her. She wonders if it's because of those pictures, to which he responds that they aren't living in the same world. After a brief conversation, Cindy returns the engagement ring and walks out, ending their relationship. Following this, UCN is seen drinking with Cream at a bar where he reveals his breakup. Seeing him sharing his personal life, she also opens up her heart and talks about herself, starting from the death of her parents to living with Kay. Cream expresses that Kay is sometimes like her older brother, sometimes like her father, and also her lover at times. To UCN's surprise, she also confesses her feelings towards him and kisses him on the lips. From this day forward, the two begin dating happily, just as Kay had hoped. Eventually, UCN also introduces Cream to his father, who appears to like her and accepts their relationship. As days pass, UCN proposes marriage to her, which she gladly accepts, and she also shares with Kay, who is undeniably sad. As a result, he decides to quit his job and leave the city. For this, he finds a replacement for himself, who is none other than Pohan. On his last day, Kay describes the work to Pohan before collapsing on the way out of the studio. He is immediately rushed to the hospital, and Cream arrives shortly after. She asks what happened, but Kay plays it off. He even signals the doctor, who lies that it's just a calcium deficiency and that there's nothing to worry about. The story returns to the present scene, and we see Kaeli doing his homework. Suddenly, he feels a sharp pain in his chest, making it difficult for him to breathe. He texts Pohan, who rushes as soon as he receives a text for help. Upon arriving there, he finds the kid to be okay, and Kaeli lies that he summoned him only to assist him with his homework. One night, while scrolling through Kay's Facebook profile, Pohan comes across a photo of Cream on a Kenting beach. He suddenly recalls that Bonnie is from Kenting, so he deduces that she and Cream were friends. Pohan then decides to visit her, and he takes Yichi and Kaeli along with him. After a few hours of driving, they arrive at Bonnie's place, but learn that she is on a trip to the mountain. With little choice, they decide to stay there for a few days and wait for her. During this time, the three of them spend quality time together as Pohan plays the guitar, and Yichi sings a song at Kaeli's request. That night, Kaeli asks his mother if she likes Pohan, but she believes that she isn't good enough for him. The kid claims that it makes no difference if the two of them are in love. After this, he falls asleep, leaving Yichi lost in her thoughts. The next day after breakfast, Pohan takes the mother and son to the same beach where Kay once took cream. They all have a great time and even take pictures to post on social media. Later, Yichi thanks Pohan for taking them out because Kaeli always wanted to go on trips, but she couldn't take him. She goes on to say that if her son was healthy, she would take him to the amusement park, but he is unable to run around and have fun like other kids. She also expresses her concern about Kaeli's surgery, which is scheduled for next week. Pohan simply suggests that she be optimistic because Kaeli loves her a lot. While they are talking, some nearby people start shouting for help as Kaeli appears to have fainted. Seeing this, Yichi immediately dials 911, while Pohan performs CPR. In the next scene, Kaeli is rushed to the hospital where he regains consciousness after a few hours and finds Pohan in front of him. For the first time, the boy opens his heart and admits that he is terrified that he will not make it and that his mother will be alone. He bursts into tears, expressing his desire to be with his mother forever. Pohan, who is helpless, tries to console him with a hug. Yichi overhears everything from outside, causing her to sob. In the past, we see Cream take Kay to a clothing store to try on her wedding dress. When Kay sees her in the white dress, he can't take his gaze away from her. She also makes him try on the groom's outfit, and the two take a photo together. 
Kay feels very low and is unable to control his emotions, so while she goes inside to try on another dress, he runs away. After running several miles, he cries out loud, thinking how unlucky he is. One night, Cream asks Kay to assist her in practicing the wedding routine. So Kay proposes to her and she accepts. Regardless, he is depressed on the inside, convinced that this moment will never come true. On the wedding day, Kay walks Cream down the aisle and reluctantly hands her over to Yusien. He then turns around to hide his tears and walks out, crying. Several days later, Kay passes away, leaving everyone in tears. At his funeral, Cream appears distraught and she is unable to think of anything. After the tragic incident, she does not appear to be mentally stable. In the next scene, we see her at Kay's place going through his belongings. During this time, she discovers a necklace that appears to have been purchased for her. In addition, she also finds a letter in which Kay had expressed his true feelings, saying, I like you. Seeing this, she can't stop her tears and sobs uncontrollably. Then one day, Yusien cannot find his wife, making him very worried. Cream is seen standing on Kenting Beach, where she walks towards the sea and takes her own life, ending a heartbreaking love story. Presently, Kaylee is being taken to the operating room for another heart surgery. After several hours of surgery, the doctor walks out to inform Ichi that her boy's heartbeat is still not steady and that they must keep him under close observation. Not long after, Yichi and Pohen notice the doctors and nurses rushing towards Kaeli's room. The two pursue them only to discover that Kaeli's heart isn't responding. Disheartened, Yichi bursts into tears and attempts to go to her son, but she is not permitted to enter. The doctors do everything they can to restore Kaeli's consciousness, but sadly, the child dies. Days pass and we see Pohan looking at Kay's Facebook profile. He begins sending messages to the late Kay, mentioning that he has learned how painful it is when someone they love the most leave. By reading the story of Kay and Cream, he started believing that one can feel happiness and sadness at the same time. He continues to write that he wants to be on Yichi's side and walk through her pain with her, but he doubts if he is worthy. Pohan also wonders why his heart aches when he sees her crying. Shockingly, he receives a response from Kay's account, advising him to confess his love without any regrets. Perplexed, Pohan immediately calls Bonnie and learns that Cream is actually alive. Here, we discover that she was alive all along, and only Bonnie knew about this. The next day, Pohan and Yichi meet Bonnie and ask her why she hid the truth about Cream's survival. Bonnie responds that Cream didn't want to exist anymore. Following this, Bonnie discusses the day Cream attempted to take her life. She did dive into the water, but thankfully some people rescued her and rushed her to a nearby hospital. Bonnie, who was in Kenting at the time, went to the hospital and stayed with her until she regained consciousness. As soon as she awoke, she began crying, remembering Kay. Bonnie somehow managed to persuade Cream to stay strong, saying Kay would never want to see her in such a state. Bonnie continues to reveal more about the past, and the film flashes back to a scene in which Cream goes to Kay's room to find his music book. During this, she discovers medicine in his hospital report, which enlightens her about his cancer. This breaks Cream's heart, but she keeps it to herself and doesn't let him know that she is aware. It is also revealed that the only person Cream truly loved was Kay, but she also decided that if her happiness is Kay's last wish, she will help him in achieving it. As a result, she started dating Yusien and did her best to show Kay that she was content. That night, when Kay left the bar after introducing her to Yusien, she didn't stay there for long and followed him secretly. Cream had convinced herself that she would tell him everything and embrace him wholeheartedly if he turned around. However, Kay never turned around, so she kept playing her part, even though it hurt her. This is the reason why she told him to be with her in the next life and decided to marry Yusien against her will. Cream had always admired Kay, which is why she asked him to dress up as her groom and propose to her. When he obliged, Cream felt that she got married to the person she loved the most. That's why on her wedding day, she had the courage to turn her back to him as she walked down the other end of the aisle. In the current timeline, Pohan and Yichi finally receive the elusive copyright to the song. After this, Yichi decides to resign and talks to Pohan about it the next day. When he asks for the reason, she claims that it has been very tiring for the last few days and that she needs a break. Pohan offers her a vacation and unlimited holiday as he is unwilling to let her go. Despite this, she sticks to her decision. In the next scene, Pohan's ex-girlfriend Lena, who is an actress, returns and invites him for dinner. Following this, the two meet at a restaurant where she informs him that she has quit smoking, drinking, and losing her temper. Lena also apologizes for the mistakes she made in the past that led to their breakup. Furthermore, she expresses that she still loves him and wants to be with him. However, 
Pohan does not appear to be ready for this and rejects her proposal. Lena tries her hardest to convince him, but when she fails, she grabs a knife and prepares to harm herself while begging him to stay. Pohan tries to calm her down and approaches her slowly to take the knife from her, but during their brawl, she accidentally stabs him, causing him to bleed. Following this, Pohan is transported to the hospital while the police arrest Lena. Ichi receives a call from an unknown number informing her of Pohan's accident, so she rushes to the hospital. Upon arriving, she notices the operation theater, which reminds her of Kaeli. After a few hours, Pohan regains his consciousness and finds his co-workers around him. Yichi laughed when she was assured that Pohan was out of danger. She appears to be having a hard time thinking about Kaeli and is unsure how to process her grief. Later, Pohan discovers the various allegations made against Lena on social media, so he decides to make a video to clarify the incident and to request that people stop condemning her. On the other hand, Cream unexpectedly pays a visit to Cindy at her photo studio in order to retrieve Kay's photographs. When Cindy learns everything about the past, she wonders why Cream dragged UCN into it. The latter responds that UCN is aware of why she did so. The scene then flashes back to when Cream asked him to marry her. At that moment, he doubts if she truly loves him, so he questions her about the matter. After being called out, Cream reveals her reasons including Kay's disease and pleads with him to marry her. She also assures him that she will leave as soon as Kay rests in peace. Afterwards, Cream pays a visit to UCN and the two embrace warmly. She apologizes to him for disappearing without a trace, but he says not to be sorry because he is glad that she is okay. The two then talk for a while, during which UCN shares his decision to reconnect with Cindy. Meanwhile, Lena visits Pohan in the hospital and apologizes for everything she has done in the past. This time, instead of begging for his love, she asks to be friends for life, which he agrees to. Finally, the two hug each other, ending the divide between them. The following day, Yusian goes to Cindy's photo studio for a private talk, but he is sad to see her with another guy. Regardless, he admits his feelings and expresses his inability to get over her. Before leaving, Yusian assures her that he will no longer bother her because she already has a steady boyfriend. When Cindy hears this, she clarifies that the guy is her manager and that she does not have a boyfriend. This news makes him more than happy, so he invites her out to dinner. A few days later, we see Yusian waiting for Cindy in a restaurant, and he seems nervous thinking that she might not show up. But his assumptions are proven wrong when she arrives, making him relieved. The two begin their conversation about resuming their relationship, and both are content to do so. Meanwhile, after being discharged from the hospital, Pohan tries to call and text Chi numerous times, but he receives no response, which worries him. He then goes back to work, where his supervisor tells him about Yichi. It turns out that she had come into the office to resign. She also talked about her future plan to visit Kiei's favorite place. Hearing this, Pohan realizes where she is and rushes to her. After a long drive, he arrives at the same hotel in Kenting where they previously stayed. Pohan locates her near the pool, looking at Kaeli's drawing. Upon seeing him, Yichi starts to cry and expresses how much she misses her son. Pohan does not have any words, so he just comforts her with a warm hug. Following this, the two of them sit on a beach and talk to each other. Yichi asks why he became a musician, and Pohan responds that he wishes to dedicate his song to the one he loves. He then asks if she wants to hear his new song, to which she agrees. It appears to be a sad romantic song, and as he plays it, flashbacks show the beautiful love story between Kay and Cream. Just after the song ends, Pohan and Yichi kiss each other, beginning a new love story. In the past, Kay is admitted to the hospital where he looks at his wristband, the one he shared with Cream. A few moments later, his mother pays him a visit and apologizes for abandoning him at a time when he needed her most. Kay, who is nearing the end of his life, forgives her, and the two share an emotional hug. He then asked how she knew he'd been admitted to the hospital, to which she lies that she heard it from one of the doctors. But in reality, it was Cream who slapped her for being cold to her son and told her to see him. Not long after, a nurse enters Kay's room to take his blood pressure, only to discover that the patient has passed away. The nurse hurriedly calls the doctor to inform him of the situation, and Cream, who has just arrived there, is devastated to hear the news. In the present, Pohan and Yichi return home and begin working on releasing Kay and Cream's final song, The Saddest Thing, which reflects their final moment. While recording the song, we are shown Kay and Cream celebrating her birthday one last time before his death. This time, as a birthday wish, Cream emotionally asks Kay to find her in the next life as soon as possible because she is poor with directions and may get lost. 
They then share an emotional moment and take a picture together before he passes out. As soon as the song is released, it becomes a huge hit, and we see Cream reflecting on her years she spent after Kay's death. She narrates that people may have thought she was alone for all those years, but in her world, there were always two people, Kay and Cree. She also claims to have been in love with Kay for several years and cannot imagine herself not loving him. Additionally, she thanks Bonnie for taking care of her and helping her finish the song. Now, she believes she has fulfilled her promise to Kay. At last, she thanks Kay for meeting her and becoming her only family. After all this, Cream vanishes again, and this time, no one knows where she is. Yucian brings her belongings home and prays for the two lovebirds to live happily ever after. In the next scene, Pohan and Nietzsche are standing in front of Kay and Cream's tomb. Pohan narrates that although the two are gone, their story has turned into a melody that will remain in their place forever. He goes on to say that their story made him realize that things still exist even after they disappear. Pohan has also learned that even in sadness, one can be brave enough to embrace all of life's happiness and sadness. He no longer believes that a sad story can't have a happy ending. At the end, we see Cream waiting on a beach until Kay arrives and embraces her with all his love, happily reuniting them.